The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples as he watched Jesus walk by. He exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I would like to invite the children to come up. This past Wednesday night, the children who are currently participating in First Communion training gathered, along with their parents and me, in the Old Fellowship Hall for our second class. The curriculum we are using provides a different instructional video for each class session. And as I prepared to teach Wednesday night's class, I went downstairs and attempted to get the DVD working in the new video player so that everything would be set and ready for the evening class when it was time to use it. And not surprisingly, I could not figure out how to get that machine working. I still had not been able to figure it out by the time class was ready to start. And um, finally, during class, Nate Nelson was gracious enough to figure it out while class was taking place, and I am so grateful for his presence because, truthfully, I would not have figured it out. My point in telling this story is that I always have had difficulty understanding how to handle and operate technical and mechanical equipment. I just don't get it. While such understanding comes very naturally to some, I always find myself befuddled and cannot seem to make sense of it. I have always been one of those people who needs to learn and verify things experientially. I am an experiential learner, and I usually must seek out someone to show me what to do and how to do it and thereby, through that experience, finally understand. Because I am an experiential learner, I appreciate the sequence of events described in today's Gospel reading. Today, we are told of John the Baptist, who has had the experience of baptizing Jesus. John has the experience of seeing the Spirit descend upon Jesus in the form of a dove and then is able to confidently point to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
it is John's experience that gave him insight that, so that he could then assuredly proclaim who Jesus is. Because of John's experience, two of his disciples decide to follow Jesus and try to learn more about this very unusual man. As they begin following, Jesus turns to them and we hear the very first words Jesus speaks in the Gospel of John. Jesus doesn't speak in that gospel until now. And what is so fascinating is that Jesus' first words in this gospel come in the form of a question as he asks, what are you looking for? Jesus uses a question to draw these two men into relationship, into the experience of a relationship with him. It is helpful to look at the original Greek when we're listening to what Jesus asks. Jesus' question would actually better be translated as, what are you seeking? Or what do you hope to find? Or what do you long for? And Jesus speaks these same words, not only to those disciples, but to each one of us as we meet him. Jesus' words invite us to look into the depth of our being and ask, what is my deepest longing? What is it that I hope to find in this one, this unusual one, called Jesus? And quite frankly, as a faith community that desires to engage with the greater community, I believe we need to remember that there are many seekers around us who are asking the same questions. There are many in our greater community who are longing for something more, something deeper in life. As we work to connect to those beyond these walls, I have to ask each one of you, what is the hallmark of this community that we can lift up so that others may see who we are, whose we are, and what we offer in this place? Well, it is interesting that the disciples reply to Jesus' question by asking where he is staying. Again, it is important to look at the original Greek as we try to make sense of what is going on in this experience. The disciples' question to Jesus goes much deeper than simply asking about a geographical, physical location. The Greek word used implies that they are really asking where he is dwelling, where he is abiding, a word that we find used over and over again in the Gospel of John. The disciples are asking Jesus where he is remaining and indwelling. Think about that. They're asking him where he is indwelling. This conversation is getting deep. They want to know where they can come and simply experience being with him. We live in a culture that focuses on doing. What we experience on a daily basis is all about doing. Our lives are all about what it is that we do or must get done. We also live in a culture where more and more of us have our faces buried in our phones or tablets and simply being with someone, abiding with someone, intentionally remaining and being present to someone is increasingly rare. What does it mean for us to reply to Jesus' question by desiring to come and simply be with him. A lot of us might have trouble with that because of the way our lives are focused in this day and age. I find it fascinating that Jesus does not offer an answer to the disciples' question. Instead, drawing them in ever more deeply into the experience of relationship. Jesus' response is a simple invitation to come and see. 
an invitation that is profoundly relational. His invitation is non-threatening, simple, and very clear. Jesus' invitational response is so beautiful because it is open-ended and does not require any prior prejudged concepts of Jesus. And it isn't, is, there's something about that that is rather miraculous when it comes to the Jesus journey. Something that is so simple that we just come and be in relationship with him. Despite the countless layers of encrusted doctrine, dogma, and determined identities the church has put onto Jesus, as well as all the requirements so many communities put on prospective followers before they even begin a faith journey, Jesus doesn't do this. There are none of those requirements. His invitation is simply to come and experience. Come and see. It is an invitation to unprejudiced, undetermined encounter and relationship. It is an adventure where the disciple and the teacher live together in relationship. It is an invitation to come and participate in this Jesus reality and it is the pathway to life. Living in relationship is what this faith journey with Jesus is all about. When we respond to Jesus' audacious invitation to come and see, we begin an experiential journey of continual discovery. And we learn that this God of whom Jesus speaks is all about relationship and love. We will discover true life that is always relational. It is always going to be changing us, and it is life that is all about a flow of love and a dance of grace. Jesus' answer, come and see, is an answer that captures the primary message of John's gospel. If you want to know the word made flesh, come and see Jesus. If you want to know what love is like, come and see Jesus. If you want to experience God's glory, be filled with bread that never perishes. Quench your thirst with living water, living, alive water. To be born again, to abide in love. If you want these things, come and see Jesus. If you want to behold the light of the world, to enter into life everlasting and to experience life that truly matters, come and see Jesus. If you want to know God, come and see Jesus. It's so simple. I said at the beginning that I am an experiential learner and I deeply want to live a life that truly matters. As I long for this in life, I cannot think of a better learning experience than responding to Jesus' invitation to come and see and experience the joy of living in relationship with him. Let's make this journey together as we begin 2017. Come and see.